Hello, Gunner fans, and welcome to the inaugural edition of Stampede City Grid. I'm Keith. I'm Justin. And uh, we're here to show you some exciting Netrunner matches from the uh, Winter Kit for the Century Box in Calgary, Alberta. Yeah, so in our this is actually the second round here, and on the left we have Keith himself. Myself, and on the right we have Chris. Yes. Uh, I will be playing uh, Harpsichord, uh, it's an NBN identity, where uh, the runner cannot steal more than one agenda a turn. Yes, and on the right Chris is playing Quetzal, which is the anarch we all know who can break one barrier subroutine per turn. So good. So good. Yes. And just for the record, this tournament took place February 6th of this year, 2016. So in the most recent legal pack at that point had been Caligoda. Yep. So we'll get a little bit of a taste, hopefully, of the new cycle. So I offer a cut to uh, my opponents, and we're about to get things underway. Yeah. So what was uh, what was kind of your game plan going in here with Harpsichord? What kind of build do you run in? Kill, kill, kill. That was my game plan. I was going to try to do all the damage... Uh, offer a friendly handshake and then light their place on fire. Yeah, that's the way to do it. That's how you do it with Harpsichord. You make movies with explosions based on real life. Yeah, you know, explosive lit is just a, it's a warm up for yes. the whole thing. Yeah. So I installed a couple of pieces of ice there over my D's and take a credit to start. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a pretty common start. Yeah. So, and I and I find with Butcher Shop is that you you want to get the money game up right away. Absolutely, it's a, it's a money game advantage. Uh, Looks like Chris put out liberated accounts uh, to try to stay ahead on the money game advantage. Yes, and uh, we should note there was a bit of blur in that bottom right corner, kind of on the runner side. So trust us, keep track of us. We know what's going on. If you can't see it, we'll see it for you. We kind of know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, to the best of our abilities. Yes, but yeah. So I mean, are you are you running mid seasons? In I, I have mid seasons, and I also have the um, twenty four seven news cycle. Yes, which is a more recent addition to kind of the butcher shop build. Right. It opens up a whole new game. And there we have the very first breaking ah, news perfect. on the board. Yep, this is exactly what you need if you're going to go for 24-7. Mm -hmm. uh, because obviously you need to be able to sack that agenda. Yeah, for those who don't know, 24-7 news cycle says it's an operation. Uh, it says you sacrifice an agenda from your score pool in order to trigger a when scored effect from another agenda in your scoring pool. And the idea is to uh, sacrifice another one-pointer in order to trigger the breaking news effect of give the runner two tags. Right. So, uh, looks like we have another daily cast here from Chris. So, just playing it safe early on, building up the econ. Uh, I know when I see Harps Accord, I usually assume it's trying to kill me. Right. I mean, that's not always the case. But uh, I think Chris, if he knows anything about current builds and whatnot he might be suspecting that and mm -hmm. so again building up early econ to be able to fight against mid seasons or sea source or anything else that might be coming his way is definitely uh, a good way to try and oh we have a dirty that. laundry here oh, no breakers right. just running face first into this open oh, oh he, he runs gets straight the news team right into the news team all right and he's thinking about what sad fate he must accept and he's taking the two tags yep uh, but it does look like he has two clicks left, so I suspect he's just going to... Uh, yep, he shakes both the tags with his final two clicks and passes the turn. I uh, should note, he earlier did run R&D and ran to a Day Raven, and I believe he jacked out. I yeah, he jacked that. out. He didn't access that top card. Yeah. So I'm going to play a little bit of a shell game here, start never advancing, throw something down, see if he runs it or not. Mm -hmm. And that Dirty Laundry is just, it's just hanging out. It's, it's stanky. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so drawing up. It's probably digging for breakers, I imagine, at this point. Because, I mean, with, with Harpsichord, uh, even though you can only steal one agenda a turn, um, you know, the deeper you can make R&D digs or whatnot, because the less you have to play that shell game. Ketzel doesn't need breakers. She breaks through barriers herself. She doesn't need a breaker. She just needs a, an E3 feedbacks, you know, maybe... Maybe some inside jobs. Who knows? Yeah, you know, she she just she like free birds. Yeah, right, she's right the free birds. Yeah, gets gets by through the Leonard Skinner of her teeth. <laughs> she, Ketzel is the Leonard Skinner of netrunners. <laughs> <laughs> just just an FYI, I yes. who didn't know that. Uh, so he's pitching a bunch of cards. Looks like he's pitching some cutlery there. Uh, is that an immolation script? I can't. 
Uh, the blur. I think that is actually. Yeah. Uh, in any case, he discarded it. So, all right, sweeps in for some money. Yep. Get some some creds going. And the only downside, you know, to Quetzal is that she doesn't break sentry. No. So you know that Daddy Raven's definitely doing some work early on, preventing those cheap R and D runs from the early game. Data Raven from the core set, still one of the best pieces of ice you can get for NBN. I find a lot of NBN ice is still like you know Tollbooth. Totally. Tollbooth still gets played. Yeah. I don't know a Glacier deck around who wouldn't want a Tollbooth added to their arsenal. Yeah. We we actually here uh, at the Sentry Box, we recently ran a no core set tournament. And no one brought in, I think because everyone realized 90% of NBN's good cards are still in core sets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when you're this good, you, why, why, you don't yeah. need to have anything else. Yeah. Why? If it ain't broken, right? Yeah. All right, so we have a couple street peddlers put down, and uh, Chris is contemplating potentially yeah. making another run. Yeah, still have that server no, that I have still, not res. Still just brought up. He probably he's probably digging for breakers. Probably digging for maybe Plascrete yeah. if he's got if he's running that. Um, yeah. But now he's playing his own shell game here with the pe- and street I peddlers. I decided to score the TGTBT that I left sitting wide open wow. for three turns. Not even behind. Not even behind. Uh, you don't need to. Yeah. Not with the NBN. You want you want him to take that agenda to take that tag. Yeah. But yeah. now that I, I I think now I got my twenty four seven news cycle in hand, so I was looking to get some credits and mm-hmm. uh, start getting the kill ready. Yeah. So obviously this is post most wanted list. So uh, what is what is your distribution of? Oh wait, interrupt. <laughs> hold hold the presses. Is that always be running? I see. Always see? be running. That is Adam's uh, directive. Uh, yeah. resource and all of a sudden Quetzal has a new directive yeah so this definitely uh, it is a build that one has seen in line but rarely have I seen it in real life yeah so Chris is testing out this interesting uh, Quetzal build here uh, as a fellow Quetzal player I tried it out for a bit and didn't personally like it too much but it, it can be very potent what does always be running say it's when your turn begins you have to make your first click has to be a run and it can be a run event from a card. Uh, and then you can break uh, a subroutine on ice by spending two clicks. It's very good. Very efficient. It's zero cost, too. Yeah. So. I mean, with Quetzal's ability, it makes a lot of sense. I found what was hard about it is that you still needed to be fairly set up. Yeah. Is that it was hard for me. Because with Adam, you're forced to. And with. He say, did just discard the always be running, he threw yeah. that away. Well, he probably he might have another one in hand. And I feel like that is what it ended up <laughs> happening. Yeah. And so again, just throw down a, a just a no name piece of piece Negative of remote. Yeah. Well, it's very common. I mean, uh, you're not doing it here, but it's very common with harpsichord just to throw down two or three modes because you know you slap down two agendas and normally they can only steal one. Right. You know, so that's never a bad game plan. Um, but so what we were saying earlier with with. Uh, Oh, do you play? I was going to ask. Do you play Quantum Cats in this build? Oh yes, absolutely. Because yeah. that's just that much better. Once you have uh, tags sitting on that runner, oh yeah. Whenever they access a Quantum Predictive model, they uh, will give you a free point, which I am always always up for. Yeah, you can be the corporate cat lady. Yes, just yes. gather them all up. His movies, yeah. People like cats and explosions. So okay, so he's oh, always be running was on the street peddler. Got rid of, uh, I think that was a fort? Yeah, it looks like a fort. And something else. Yeah. Uh, so he's always been running, is out. And I think, was that at the end of... No, that was during his turn. Yeah. He's going to trash the other one and install... Turntable. Yep. Oh, not what you want to see. This uh, this is uh, definitely a big swing, because he's looking to get rid of that breaking news that's sitting there. And he's going to access a card off of R&D. Oh, I think that's the 24-7. That's the 24-7. So I think he knows the game plan. He knows what's up. And he gets a counter on medium. So your r and is looking pretty poor now. It is, but medium counters uh, really don't do much when you can only steal one agenda a turn. No, so, oh, so you're... He you're, did not clear his tag at the end of his turn. But I realized shortly after that he had one tag, and you need two tags in order to play three ah, tags. Yeah. So, very, so I pulled very, that back. Very generous of Chris. Yeah. Right, we're very gentlemanly. We like to think of the box here. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, a little bit of a misplay, but no harm, no foul, literally. And so, oh, that was what I was going to ask you earlier. What yeah. is your 
kill distribution. The kill distribution is uh, three scorched earths and which we see here three traffic accidents. Okay, so you went for the full complement. Full complement. That's 15 influence. Yep. I do not run Astroscript in this deck. Or Sand Sands. Or I mean, Sand yeah. Sands. So it is all. straight kill. Yeah. All the explodes. Yes. So it's very it's a very all-in strategy. So obviously, yeah. if someone's packing Plastreets and uh, I've had worse or any sort of, you know, kill, right. kill hate, kill hate, <laughs> <laughs> uh, then... It's it's gonna be a sad day for you. It's it's definitely uh, seems to be the case on a lot of decks that I was facing this tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them were ready for a lot of damage. Yeah, and that's unfortunate because that's it. Definitely is kind of a meta call. Yes, you know, exactly. But I think what I think probably and I do I did experience the same thing at this tournament um, with okay, so we have a quandary on HQ run there. Yes, the quandary, the question of the day: Will he break it with always be running? Mm -hmm. Two clicks to get through. Nope. nope. Probably wise, considering he probably wouldn't be able to break whatever was behind that. And if it was like another data raver or something, that would... Or even better, just just grab another uh, TGTBT and leave yourself with a tag. Something like that, yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay, so drawing up some more. Yeah. He knows the kill is, is, uh, is happening. He's seen the traffic accident. Yep, so inject. So we got an E3... Is that hunting? No, that's uh, data fold in, I believe. Yeah. Oh, another always be running. And what was the fourth card? Uh, that? I missed that. Same old thing, I think. Oh, so he's pitching the E3, which is yeah. interesting. Because you would think with Quetzal and that's always be running. Spoon? Now, that's another or thing with running. this is that with the E3, which is pretty fairly common, almost you arguably an auto include in most Quetzal decks. Yeah, with Quetzal especially. Yeah, so always be running with E3 is, is pretty potent. Uh, E3 feedbacks, you spend a credit after you've broken a subroutine to break another uh, subroutine on a piece of ice. Yeah, which obviously it triggers itself, so you can get through all the bioroids, all, all the heavy ice, as long as you can break that first sub. Or any sub, I guess. It's just an efficient card. Yeah, yeah. All right, so here... Wait, what? I didn't catch that. Why were you shuffling? Did you Jackson? Um, yes, I believe I, I just uh, removed a Jackson Howard from the game as the face-down card. Gotcha. Okay. So what is your... What do you think at this point? What are you kind of trying to do? I mean, like, you got the two points. You clearly have kill cards in hand. Yeah. I'm, I'm just looking for a window to get a second tag on him in order for me to actually uh, land the traffic accident scorch kill. Yes. That's, and then, obviously, if you're going all in kill and no Astros, yeah. then fast advance is not really an option here. My opponent's being very vigilant on avoiding and removing tags when necessary. Yeah, and that's the thing, is um, they have Chris has not actually stolen any agendas yet, so midseason has not been viable. Yep. And that, oh, that one I was going to say earlier is that uh, I think uh, immediately after the most wanted list came out, is that a lot of people start experimenting with Wayland again, right? Because it wasn't affected at all w by the MWL list. Uh, I guess that's redundant, but we'll ignore that. We'll just move on. Yeah. And uh, so we have uh, a spooned run here coming on HQ to uh, take out the quandary. The question has been answered, and he's continuing. <laughs> Oh, and he runs into a resistor. Yes. Which is nice because it doesn't cost anything to res. So he is going to access one card yeah, from my hand. Yeah, unfortunately, Quetzal just melts and up. And sees the, sees the fire. He sees the burning coming. Making it rain. Sulfur. Yep. And, um, yeah, so with, with the kind of uh, shift towards Wayland for a bit, that was, might have been one of the reasons why people were suspecting killing this tournament. Yes, I, I feel like that was probably... Uh, a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't fair, but I mean, I was running Wayland, and I know I saw definitely a few other people. Um, and so. I triple advance there and score the quantum predictive model. Meow. Mm hmm. Okay, so, I mean. Sometimes you have to do the, your, the work yourself. Yeah. Now, this is interesting because you're up 3 0, yeah. but. I feel like it's still pretty even. It yeah. feels even. So the, the the idea is you want to keep putting pressure on them and force them to make those runs and access those cards. Uh, because eventually they'll get sloppy and they'll leave a few tags. Uh, well, well you know, scorch. and again, if he doesn't keep his econ up, yes. then... There's always the mid-seasons. Yeah. Now what Chris has got to ask himself, seeing that Scorch, is now does this mean you have two Scorches? Or is that the same Scorch as before? He knows you have the traffic accident. Yeah. So when you haven't discarded it. 
Um, so at this point, he, he definitely has to stay vigilant uh, on avoiding tags. And but my still, credit pool is running a little low right now, so I'm still trying to find... There it is, a sweeps week. Yeah, that'll be nice. Yeah, because he still has the Liberate out, which still has 12 on it. Yeah. And we have Daily Cast, which still has 6 to tick down there. And throw some more ice on HQ to keep him out. And crediting up. Okay, so new ice to replace Count. Quant, uh, our lost quandary, our solved quandary yep. <laughs> on HQ there. Oh, and he's Dude. being ballsy. He's doing he's doing a dirty laundry run on HQ, and we have the pop up. Well, is it really? I mean, it's, it can't be that ballsy because it, at worst, he it, spends two clicks yeah. to click through it. And if it's an, you know if it's another barrier, then he can cut still right. Still has cancel. And so. there's the traffic accidents that he saw earlier that I revealed to him. Yeah, and so we can see he has eleven creds right now. Yeah. So still, still pretty high in the money game, and that's the thing too. You not being able to see too much money so far, even if you did get mid seasons, right? You really don't have much. You you, you couldn't land anything on him because he could beat any trace you would put out. Mid seasons right now is looking like a very distant option, um, potentially later on down the road when his money isn't so full. But right now, I was pretty broke mm -hmm. and was just more looking for the twenty four seven combo to set up. Right. But, I mean, if you need the second tag from traffic accident, yeah. this seems pretty unlikely unless you land at mid-seasons. Because, it, he, like you said, he's being very careful not to take... Uh, you know, he's running early, and so if he does take any tags, he has the later clicks to then shake him. And so so the great thing about that is when you do 24-7, the runner will gain two tags from your breaking news. Oh, Which yeah. will enable nope. your traffic accident. You're totally right about that. Um, and they stick, which is yeah, great. They yeah, they stick around. Oh, here we there go. There it is, 24-7. Speak of the devil. So I'm going to sacrifice the quantum predictive model. Some low animal cruelty. Low animal cruelty. Hang yeah. the cat. And here so, we go. I think right. I have the game. I go for the traffic accidents. Well, I let's hit. see. Is he going to hit I've had worse? And you do. Yes. <laughs> the I've had worse triggers. Yeah. Now, if you still have two scorches, uh, he's up to six. So as long as yeah. he doesn't have another I've had worse, it is possible you could double scorch him. Because I think you have just six credits there? Yeah. Yeah. Instead, no, it looks nope, like you're just, just going trust to... I just trust the always be running. Yeah. I yeah, don't have the kill directly in hand, but I just wanted to make sure that I got rid of that third I had be uh, always be running to make sure he can't get through any other ice. Yep, that's smart play, because he has not shown any breakers thus far. Uh, we can only assume he has some, but what really? they may be is still a mystery. Uh, it's, a, it's unfortunate that you weren't able to pull off that maneuver a couple turns ago when that uh, liberated counts was still yeah. full of. That would have been a great hit. And he accesses archives. Sees a whole lot of nothing. Yep. And more dirty laundry. Yep. Just getting all the dirt on those celebs over in Harpsichord. Yeah, I don't believe he made a run on Archives. I, just, I think he just wanted to see the face-up cards. So, and now he has an agenda. And he's yep. swapping that, of course, with the breaking news. Yep, that's a, that's a big blow. Yep. Okay, so you, you're in kind of a tough spot right now. Yeah, he, saw, he sees how the play is going to work, so... I need to get another breaking news scored and get some money going mm -hmm. pretty quick. Now it should be noted that uh, he's looking pretty. His heap is, or his, sorry, his stack is looking pretty low there. Yeah, I think he's only got maybe like four or five cards left in it. And that's that's sort of the waiting game now. So I need to find uh, hopefully a breaking news or Jackson Howard to shuffle back in some of those kill cards. Yeah. So always be running three influence, I believe. It's three influence. Right. So uh, he has three of those. Out of he's got nine. Uh, he could, I don't think, E3s, he's got two E3s, mm -hmm. at least, so that's another four. If he's running three E3s, and that's all his influence. Yeah. If he's running, but even if he's running two, so he can't be running Levy, we can, right. we can deduce that. So, you know, if you could somehow cycle your kill right. and wear it down, you might be able to just win by attrition. That was the hope, anyway. Yep, so you're Jacksoning back yep. in your kill. Yeah, so this it, it's always it's always a tough matchup against Anarchs because you just when you're playing kill because you just never know when they have, when they have I've had worse. Yeah, and that was the that was the saving grace for him that uh, definitely kept him going. It saved many many Anarchs bacon. Yes, yes. 
Yeah. And I, I like it as a splash in criminal too. I've seen criminal decks now and then. It's a great draw card even without the kill. Yeah, and that's definitely something criminals have always lacked is strong, strong draw ability. They have the money, so they can definitely make that exchange for cards. Yeah, and because they can't, they have a hard time. Well, we have a run on uh, R and D. Maybe, maybe. Paying some money. He beats the trace. Ah, right, because you kept it at the base, it looks yep. like. And he gets a medium counter, two. just friendly reminder that yep, he gets two cards. Oh, snipes a Beal. Yep. And, okay, so he's still he, a too good to be true and he's going to take the tag. Yep. So Oh, gets, uh, right. So what he's questioning now is if he switches with turntable, does he still take the tag? Yep. And I believe... Oh, but he can't steal it because of... He can't oh, of steal course. it. Yeah. <laughs> so he just gets the tag and it goes uh, right man. back on top. Well, that's... Harps that... Accord movies doing work. Yeah, there's there's our derp moment yeah. for the day. <laughs> We're sitting here debating it and it's like, oh, wait. Um, and see, this is... Uh... Now, Employee Strike was out, but it's funny because it wasn't getting used that much until more recently when these kind of IG builds have cropped up right. in, in the recent... Most recent past, um, but employee strikes another card you really never want to see. It, it, it turns apart. off your the natural ability against uh, their uh, ID. Mm -hmm. And hedging up for some money, yep. much needed cash. And looking to discard some cards now. Yeah, and what's interesting with the, the the cred differential between you two is that because he's had always be running and not using breakers, and your ice hasn't been. Uh, overly taxing in that sense. I mean, he's been able to keep his credit count fairly high just because he's just using clicks. Right. Or he was, until he got trashed. Um, and he's so, just saving that money for a rainy day. <laughs> yeah, just stashing it on the mattress. There he goes. He uh, there's a 15 one. minutes. 15 minutes. Decides not to turntable it, which... Oh, there we go. He absolutely yeah, is. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> you'd be kind of foolish not to. Turntable is a as yeah. a console for Anarchs. It's two costs, and it lets you swap uh, a a scored agenda with another agenda in the corpse pool uh, when you score. Yes, um, which uh, is just all kinds of fun against all kinds of IDs, particularly MBN. I find them. Yeah, and it's specifically is uh, it's coming to play both those times into keeping him alive because. Yeah, in this case, uh, swapping uh, 15 minutes and the breaking news so you can't access their abilities that you, you could use with those. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, against more typical fast advance, you switch out Astros with the counter on it. Even, you know, someone tries to get cheeky, scores a three-point beal. Yeah, you know, or, absolutely. Uh, yeah. You can just take that away from them. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it, it, and it works well against uh, even... Uh, you know, Project Atlas, Project Petruvius, any of the project and agendas. with a counter, yeah. Nisei Mark II. Well, I mean, with Nisei, I mean, you could always If just... they don't use it, and they don't know that you're accessing an agenda, sometimes... Yeah. No, yeah, Nisei is definitely another great target for it. I find when I play Nisei and there's a turn table, I, unless, unless I really don't care, I try to use the Nisei, Nisei counter up as fast as possible because of that possibility. Right, and he's accessing from my hand, and again, he just sees the fire in my hand, yeah. just waiting... So it's just it's burning a hole in your hand, yeah. basically, what we got. Because uh, you clearly... You I have need it. a breaking news, or I need to get some credits in order to beat him in a mid-season trace. Yeah, absolutely. Both of which are really hard to get. Yeah, because obviously we're not worried about film critic here, so right. if... He accesses, uh, oh, explode there's a Explodapalooza from okay. R&D. Uh, gains five credits. Yeah. And Explodapalooza is great with Butcher Shop, because, I mean, a lot of people lamented at first... Uh, the switch over from NAPDs to right. Explode as due to MWL kind of tweaking for MBN. But um, I think most people have adjusted to it, and actually some people prefer it. And in a build like this, Correct. based on kill, you and especially with midseason, you want they to They don't have money. an option. Yeah. They, they don't have an option to give you the money. Yeah, because the thing is, with NAPD, you can always just refuse to pay and not steal exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, whereas Exploda, you're forced to steal it, and you get the money on top of that. So it's, it, it's a great compliment for midseasons in these butcher shop builds. Decided to start closing the door there on R&D because he was beating those traces and running through without impunity, removing those tags directly afterwards. Okay, so now we got a run amok. Yeah, this is a, a new run event for Anarx. Yep, just came out here in Calagora. This would have been brand spanking new, so it might have been the first time you even played against it. Yeah. Uh, who knows? Uh, so the idea is that you make a run, and 
Any ice that's res during the run can then be trashed afterwards. Well, a ice that is res mm. during the run may be trashed afterwards. So obviously, I'm gonna assume uh, I didn't res it, and yeah. uh, we're doing the trace now for Data Raven. I boosted the strength of the trace in order to potentially catch him, and maybe let him give me a counter mm -hmm. on Data Raven, which he does. Yeah. Now I. And the access yep. uh, looks like a fast track traffic yeah, accident. Traffic accident. Oh right. God! Oh, those are the two cards I wanted. <laughs> uh, looking Chris, for those ones. Christmas is coming early. Yep. Is that no and another oh, one? Oh, oh, brutal! So he's just he's digging deep. So and you know, Murdoch it can be it can be kind of pricey. Uh, I find it works well if you uh, it works really well in Ken Tenma. Yep. Because obviously you can use public terminal. And gives Ken me Ken another ability. counter on it. Kind of mitigates the cost. But outside <sighs> of Ken... The tags are possible now. They're possible. Let me see. The last card. News team. News oh. team. Oh, oh, no. Just, just bricks on these runs. Yep. Oh, man. That's brutal. He trashes it and takes the tags. Now, does he... He still has two clicks left, so yep. he can't shake them, but he'll be pretty broke after this. Oh, no. He has four tags now? Cause yep. he, oh, because he was taken. He's running again. So he's just going to tag me. Yep. Wow. Uh, two counters on Data Raven. Oh. So. I res the rock around. So he can get through that with Ketzel. He can break one of those barriers. Yeah, because he's only got four credits left, it looks like. Yeah, I didn't actually. I guess I, I apologize because I didn't notice that he had those tags up there. I thought those yep. were just click counters for a second. But yeah, so he's pretty much gone tag me because there's still two counters in the Data Raven which you can use. So exactly. kind of unavoidable. Um, which is interesting because you think when you're getting so low in your deck that you would not want to risk it. But I guess he's at five points, so he's probably thinking if I just snipe one more Beal, one more Exploda, then that's right. game. Yeah. So, and meanwhile, I had the kill in my hand, two Scorches, a Traffic Accident, and I've got a Traffic Accident, two cards down, on its way. Yeah. Things were looking great. So, yeah. All I had to do was just avoid him accessing an agenda this one turn. Okay, so he pays this through is, the resistor because yeah. he didn't boost the trace on it. And TTBT, he takes a tag. All right, he's at six. Oh, this is tense. He's down to the wire. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, what happened there? Okay, let's count this up. So you got a Beal Exploda. That's yeah. four, and then oh, and then three others. So that is so seven. sorry. He got seven yeah. points there. Yeah. I, Never mind. We miscounted. The that, lucky so, access. Yeah. Wow. So that one and well, you had three agendas. In yeah. Here? Oh, yeah. that's rough. Yeah. Yeah, and you had the second traffic accident coming yeah. up. Oh man, yeah. that's yeah, so hard. Kind of that next turn. Yeah, and he did not have an iPad worse in hand. So if you were able to draw that traffic accident, it would have been game. And that's the beauty, you know, that's the beauty of Netrunner is that it, a lot of times it comes down to that last turn or two. Yep. You know. It's that tense. Well, all right. So that was game one of two in this match. Yep. And so we're going to bring you the next one coming right up here. So stay tuned. Stampede City Grid. This is Justin. This is Keith. Signing off. Always be running.